The QX80 from Infiniti is the first vehicle in the US from the automaker that is over six figures. We're gonna find out right now if it's worth it. From the front with its new double arched grille inspired by the shapes of bamboo forest, the illuminated emblem, very Mercedes of them, flush door handles, very Range Rover of them, blacked out pillars giving it a sleeker appearance, the full width LED element in the back, I'd say the QX80 is stepping up to the plate a lot more. If the designers at Infinity are here to impress, well, I'm here for it too. This full-size SUV has always been one of my favorites. I've always felt like they've brought a little bit of interest to the category, and I'm seeing that same interest in this current design language. The QX80 will come in seven colors, including dynamic metal, which is the one you see here. Now, normally Infinity sticks with the basics, whites, blacks, silvers, and reds, but they do include a blue with this launch. A lighting sequence will guide you to the door if you've got the fob in your hand. The door handles extend and you get a bit of a light show before you start rolling on your standard 20 inch wheels or upgraded 22s if you so desire. Once we get inside, you're greeted with a host of luxurious amenities. The first is this dual 14.3 inch screens up here. You get a nine inch screen down here for HVAC systems. And on the base model, a 14 speaker audio system from Klipsch. But if you go up into the other trim levels, 24 speakers. The UX system is the Infinity InTouch system, which I'll be honest, I haven't used in a while, so I'll be interested to see how that has improved. But it does have Google built in. Google navigation also helps you out there and you can download your favorite Google apps. You do also have wireless CarPlay and Android Auto if you so choose. And if that's not enough screen for you, the QX80 now offers a head-up display as an option. The shifters comprised of push buttons, freeing up some space for storage and the ever important cup holder. Yes, you do need to put your Alfred coffee somewhere. You can also opt for a cooler in the center console that can chill a six pack of soda. So there are a couple of interesting new camera features and functions here in this car. And the first one is this, this is called wide front view and this actually stretches 180 degrees well between 170 and 180 is what they said this can also be expanded onto these two screens i'm not able to do it right now because for some reason this button is not working but when you're driving through like a parking structure or something this should be able to allow you to see a really full view of what's going on there's also an invisible hood feature, which yes, we've seen before and is great if you're into any off-roading adventure. But this can also be used to help you better judge where curbs are. So for example, when you're parking and you can't exactly see where to stop, use this. I definitely overshoot the curb, but thankfully I don't drive super low cars. So there's another feature on here. There's a front camera and a little system called Journey Diary. And this is a camera that you are going to be able to actually record and take pictures of video of the journey that you're on. So uh, Mike Danger, I think we might become obsolete when it comes to shooting each other's videos. I'm not sure who's gonna use that, but I'm sure there are some adventure Instagrammers who are gonna be all over it. There's also an in-car camera so you can watch the hijinks in the back or check inside the car once you're out of it, just in case you've left anything on the back seats. Anytime I get into a Nissan or an Infiniti product, my expectation of seat comfort is super high. And I can tell you these seats are really nice and comfortable. You have a nice wide seat cushion and for someone with a little bit longer legs, it's nice and broad too, but it's not too long for someone like me. This is the autograph trim, which is the highest trim level. So obviously the materials, the fit and finishes in here are going to be a lot more sophisticated and beautiful. And I can tell you that they really do a very nice job. First of all, I love this burgundy. It's really pretty. They've got this sort of metal inlay on open pore wood, which I think looks very handsome, almost like a pinstripe suit 
which I think is very elegant. Lots of really soft touch points. And you know, where there is plastic, um, it's always down kind of below and it's not super cheapy feeling. So I really do think that they've done an excellent job as far as your immediate environment is concerned. The QX80 delivers. When it comes to space, this is a three row SUV. So the impression is, is that you'll be able to put a lot of people and stuff in here. On this top autograph trim, you do have this screen right here. And there's another system that um, the QX80 is implementing and it's called biometric cooling. And it is some kind of a camera or sensor back here that can tell when a person, a body is getting a little hot and will automatically turn on the AC to cool you off, which I think that's kind of like mission impossibly cool. So now we're gonna see what getting into this third row is like. There's a one button thing here. So you can leave a baby seat in here if you need to leave a baby seat in here while you get into this third row. And I'm going to, goodness, we're gonna have to ratchet up the speed on this because it's all electronic. Deploying the third row seats. Again, everything is electronic, so it takes a little bit of a second. So ingress and egress looks like it's pretty decent when it comes to you getting in here. And then I'm gonna kind of sit over here so you can see what the room is like. First of all, materials back here are super nice. Oh, you can't just do this automatically, so this is a little awkward. Mm. You do have heated seats back here, again, just in the autograph, so don't get too excited if you're buying a lesser one, but it's a little bit upright. Um, this is the headrest, but I'm not gonna worry about that right now. Leg room is fairly decent. Headroom, again, for a super taller person, probably not going to fit very comfortably in here, but you do have some charging ports back here. You have cup holders. The person in the third row is not completely forgotten about. Still comfortable seats. Yeah, I could do a stint back here. Cargo space gets 18% greater behind the second row and 30% bigger behind the third row. We don't have actual numbers now, so can't compare that to the competition, but it seems like a good move in the right direction. So in order to store all of the stuff in the cargo space, oh, there's a motion thing. Aileen figured it out. <laughs> we're carrying bags and we're putting bags in here. Oh, look at us. Okay. Does it close like that too? Oh, yeah! <laughs> when it comes to moving all of this, Infinity is now using a 3.5 liter twin turbo V6. So this is the part of the video where I pour out a beer uh, as a memorial because uh, Infinity is no longer putting in their monstrous 5.6 liter V8 in this thing. And yes, I know that um, they've traded up for something that is incredibly more efficient, but that engine was grunty and torquey and would get you over just about anything. So I'm a little sad. However, you will manage more power by a lot over that old mill to the tune of 450 horsepower and 515 pound feet of torque. This is an iteration of the VR engine in Nissan's GTR. Okay, that sounds good. And naturally, it's lighter than the outgoing V8, and we all know that lightness usually equals quickness. All while being more efficient, so yes, the QX80 should move much better than the outgoing model. I should also note that it's mated to a nine-speed automatic transmission. If you do want to snag one of those V8s, KBB might be able to help you out. If you click on the link above, we can help you find out what your current car is worth for a trade-in. As far as the ride goes, the QX80 rides on a new, or what Infinity are calling, a new chassis. You've got four-wheel drive capability and drive modes, including sport, snow, tow, and standard that should get you over almost anything you can think of. It also comes with air suspension if you're hoping for something a little bit more comfortable. Infinity usually imbues this car with a nice ride, and even though it's body on frame construction, you will feel very well taken care of. 
There is, of course, also pro-pilot assist that will keep you out of trouble. Things like lane keeping assist, blind spot monitoring, collision warnings, all those kinds of things. But Nissan also does have a hands-free system that you can use on pre-prescribed roads. I haven't used it yet, but I'm very interested to. So I think we'll test that when we do the drive here. Pricing on the 2025 Infiniti QX80 starts at $84,445 for the pure trim. That's only with rear wheel drive. The Lux trim gets you that new head up display, remote control rear seats, 22 inch wheels, and air suspension, and will cost you $91,545. The sensory trim, yes, here's where it happens, gets you over six figures, as well as ambient lighting, that biometric cooling gizmo, and a digital rear view mirror. The Autograph, the highest trim, will get you a second row touchscreen for HVAC controls, second row massaging seats, and that in-car camera. It might also give you some heart palpitations at a very steep $112,590,000. And if you want to add four-wheel drive onto the first two trims, tack on $3,100. A big car with a very big price tag. Um, so the question, would you spend $100,000 on this car? You know, I'm gonna let you talk about that in the comments. Myself, I'm gonna reserve judgment until I drive it, but it's got some excellent new design going for it. It's got some incredible tech, some of which, I don't know, maybe you'll use, maybe you won't, and a gutsy new engine. Uh, I think it's got something going for it. If you want to hear more, subscribe to the KBB YouTube channel for the rest of the details.